Hello and welcome everybody to this afternoon session about creating a center of excellence with Tableau. If you are here to know more about how to move forward with your Tableau adoption uh, to, to the next steps so we, you make it to the right decision to be here. Um, so uh, first things first, our, our learning objectives for the day. Um, by the time you've left here, you should have the answers to these three questions. Um, first, what is a center of excellence? Um, and you'll see that abbreviated throughout our slides and throughout our talk today as COE. Um, second, why does my organization need a center of excellence? And third, uh, what can I do to create a COE in my organization? By show of hands, please, who has already in, the, in their organization a center of excellence or maybe thinking about it? Oh. So that, that's good to nice. see a few yeah. of you. A couple of uh, hands. So everyone who raised their hands, should also probably consider this fourth question. Uh, where is my company today in the COE framework? So keep those in mind as we go through out the, uh, out the slides, uh, and we'll return to those at the end to make absolutely sure that you've gotten the key, the key points. Uh, so in a little more detail, our, our agenda for the afternoon. First, uh, brief introductions. Then again, we'll focus on what is a COE, talk about the definition. Then we'll look at um, why the COE is important. Why should your organization have a COE? Uh, and then we'll move on to actually putting it into practice. So that's getting started, and then tips, tricks, and best practices. Um, and we will close with wrap-up and questions. So a little bit about us. Um, why are we here today talking to you, right? Why are we, um, why should you consider us the authority? Um, so my name is Andrew Connolly. Uh, I've been with Tableau for just shy of three years now. Um, you may be able to tell based on my accent that I uh, started with Tableau in our uh, US office uh, in Washington, DC, um, relocated to London in the summer of 2017. Um, and I'm very excited to be here uh, talking to you all today. And I'm Rafa Zarka. Uh, I'm also a solution architect at Tableau, here based in the London office. I think from my accent, you wonder I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm part of the uh, professional services team. Uh, but I have been working in several countries, Syria, France, Canada, Switzerland, and now in the UK. Um, so we spend most of the time working with the customers. Um, I have a PhD in computer science and mainly focus on the business intelligence, data analytics, and data warehousing. Um, so Andrew and I are always uh, in the mission to help our customers. We spend most of our time um, working on site with the, uh, with the customers. And actually, we have noticed that there is a trend for the majority of our successful customers. And, we and it's, it's not just they work with us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it might be. Uh, but I would, I would credit it really to the center of excellence that I have built. And that's why we are here to tell you more what we have seen and learned from our customers so we can share the best practices with you. And you can see our picture over there. So when we don't work on the customer side, we run around the office, try to take some pictures and selfies. <laughs> so we're moving on now to one of the key topics. What exactly is a COE? Um, and I would say at first glance, the COE term, center of excellence, is, is kind of vague or broad. And a lot of people um, have a hard time pinning down exactly what it is. So what we've done to clear up that confusion um, is go for four categories that we think uh, cover or encompass all of the key activities and functions of a COE. So first, uh, education and support. Think um, training for new desktop users uh, or maybe an internal help desk. Next, we have curated resources. So think of custom tutorials, custom walkthroughs that are designed for uh, your specific environment, uh, things that solve pain points unique to your Tableau deployment. Um, then we have community. Um, so we've given all four of our categories um, equal weight technically, uh, but I, I would say if, if we had to choose a favorite or a most important, it's, it's community. Uh, you'll see that as a theme throughout everything we talk about today. So when we, when we say community, we mean um, think of users collaborating, sharing ideas, uh, sharing feedback with each other, um, generally uh, not working in silos. Uh, and the last category here is best practices. Best practices is another one of those 
kind of nebulous terms, I think, that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, here, we're, we're thinking about it as taking those ideas from the community and preserving the best ones, documenting the best ones, so that um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. When someone figures out a great solution and it works for you, um, it gets recorded, it gets written down, and it gets reused. And something also maybe to add that, uh, of course, all of these are your Tableau Center of Excellence, but make sure that some people think that it's about the business intelligence and analytics team. Of course, it would be great to have some of those guys in the center of excellence, but it's not meant to be only those guys. Yeah, that's a real key point. A lot of customers will call something a center of excellence, but it's actually just their BI team, and that's a bit misguided in our opinion. Certainly, um, you're going to have a BI team probably, depending on the size of your organization, and they should be important to your center of excellence, but they shouldn't be the center of excellence. If the BI team is doing it all, then you're not, you really don't have that, that community aspect, which, which we have called out as our most important. Uh, and so you see here, we've got kind of a jargony definition of center of excellence. Um, I won't read it all because it is pretty, pretty wordy, but I think the, the highlighted parts are the, are the keys, right? So we want to, or the center of excellence is intended to coordinate and share processes and knowledge um, and to make those things repeatable and scalable so that, again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. So now we move on to the next big question um, and the next big section here in, in the slides. Um, why are we building a COE? Um, what, uh, why is the COE so important? So um, I think at, at the start of their Tableau journey, um, most customers are excited about what Tableau can help them achieve. Um, they've got big ideas in their mind. They see some mythical finish line that Tableau is going to help them cross, right? They're very, um, they have high, you know, lofty goals, we'll say. They're envisioning a Tableau journey that looks something like this, uh, kind of a nice straight A to B path. Um, and unfortunately, in our experience, it, it's not so easy uh, in most cases. Frequently, the Tableau journey looks more like this. Um, we might call that a windy or, or circuitous path. Um, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but I think one of the big reasons for that uh, is because people are involved. Um, and anytime you get people involved and people need to change, uh, it doesn't always go according to plan, right? People are generally resistant to change, and so you wind up with this uh, windy, all over the place path. You can see we actually still get from A to B here, but it's not very efficient. Um, I actually once had a customer, um, right after I got to London, my, one of my very first customers here in the UK, um, they were at the start of their Tableau journey, and we were talking about some of the people changes they needed to make, and the struggle they were having. Um, and I think they had a really great way of describing it. They said something along the lines of, uh, the people changes felt like herding cats. Um, and so that's every time I see this slide, I think of trying to herd cats. So imagine cats from A to B, and they're all over the place. So uh, on the last slide there, we talked about people primarily, um, or cats, as it were. Um, but um, what are the actual pitfalls? What are the actual obstacles on this windy journey? Why is, it, uh, why is it so tricky to avoid these obstacles? Um, and believe it or not, it's because they actually look a lot like this iceberg. Uh, I think to a lot of Tableau customers, the first thing they see um, when it comes to Tableau is Tableau Desktop. And I think that's, I think that's rightly so. Um, a lot of people might call Tableau Desktop the pretty face of, of Tableau's offerings, right? Uh, and for many analysts, that pretty face is accessible, it's easy to pick up, it's easy to get started with. Um, you could even get lost in that pretty face. Um, but in fact, the Tableau is way more than just a pretty face. So there are all, all of these things lurking beneath, um, waiting to trip you up. Um, and, and all these other topics we see here on the, on the lower right um, are just as important, if not more important, than your basic Tableau desktop skills. So things like um, data preparation, visual analytics, content promotion, all really key processes um, around the Tableau deployment, the Tableau journey. Some of them are more technical and skills-based than others, of course, um, but the COE can help with a lot of, with really all of these uh, challenges. And the idea is when you, when you get to the COE stage, um, you can navigate around all these hidden, hidden obstacles. So we talked about the path being a little windy, um, and now we're looking out for the icebergs. 
Um, but where does the CUE actually factor in? Uh, so I think this quote is uh, simple, but actually quite useful here. So um, they say that time changes things, but you actually have to change them yourself. Does anyone know um, which famous business icon said these words? Any guesses? Just shout it out if you, th if you think you know. Is it Bill Gates, maybe? <laughs> could be, could be. Um, actually, renowned Campbell's Soup CEO, Andy Warhol. Um, but I think it applies here. Uh, and, and the point is, the point I really want to drive home is that sometimes just installing Tableau, not enough, right? Tableau is great software, but alone it's just software. Um, and I think the time aspect, you can think of time as, um, as time passes, you get new technology, you get new software, but you don't get the benefit until you actually do the work to make that software fit with your organization, to fit with your processes, to fit with your people. And again, I think that's where the COE comes in. Uh, so here we're still thinking about that same question, right? Why do we want a COE? Why is it so important? Um, but we're coming at it from a slightly different angle. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you in here have seen um, in Tableau's sales and marketing material something, something that looks like this, right? It's uh, talking about modern BI, it's talking about self-service, governed analytics, all great things, uh, maybe a little buzzwordy, but still um, outcomes that people are striving for, and I think rightly so. Um, but if we dig into what it actually takes to do all these things, right? It's a lot of, again, it's a lot of um, soft skills, right? So it's not always just training on a piece of software. It's not always learning a new coding language. Uh, it's new habits, it's new workflows, uh, new processes for your users. Um, you know, in, in many traditional deployments prior to Tableau, uh, people that worked in BI were used to communicating via JIRA tickets, via templated uh, requirements documents, kind of cumbersome, uh, maybe even old school things. Uh, with Tableau and the COE, what we really want to push um, is increased communication. So your consumers, your analysts, even your DBAs, um, they should all have relationships with each other. They should have a common Tableau language even uh, to communi communicate in about their, all their Tableau work and their Tableau projects. Um, and so we think, again, a COE is an important way to build those cross-departmental relationships and bridges. And so, again, these last three slides have been very, um, very preachy, maybe, talking about all these lofty ideas, right? Um, but ultimately, it's just about getting stuff done. Tableau is an incredible tool, incredible platform, but it's just to help your organization reach whatever its objectives are. Um, we can also reach our objectives by having some fun as well with, the, with Tableau, right? Uh, actually, no, Rafa, the fun is not till, uh, not till this evening, day to night out. <laughs> The point here, though, is don't, don't lose sight of what you're actually trying to achieve. Whatever your, whatever your company, whatever your nonprofit, whatever your organization is actually doing, um, Tableau is just a tool to help you get there, and the COE is the, the way to get the most out of the tool. And if you still don't believe me, after all that preaching, I think the experts at Gartner uh, are pretty persuasive. So they say centers of excellence accelerate the uptake of new technologies and optimize core capabilities with higher efficiency and lower costs. Um, so that's a pretty good, a pretty good summarization of uh, the value proposition, I think. And uh, now I will turn it over to Rafat. Thanks. So after this introduction, great introduction from Andrew, uh, we want to know maybe more how to make this happen. What do we need to do in order to lay the foundation of our center of excellence. So first of all, we need to find the executive, get sponsored. Everyone, maybe most of us, would like to be a superhero. Who doesn't? But it's all about having the right person doing the right job. And this is what, uh, what we need to do in order to, to get uh, someone who start building the center of excellence. So why does this matter? Because we need a visible leader who can drive enthusiasm through ta uh, for Tableau and the Center of Excellence. And we need a well-placed sponsor who can basically solve the conflicts, especially we all know uh, there may be some conflicts between IT and business. When business asks questions, IT says, 
oh, we need to have maybe our scrum or something sprint you need to wait and so on so you need someone to to work in between and solve these issues then how do i do it um, it's always better to start with someone who knows how this journey with tableau started someone who has been in contact with tableau who knows the salesperson account managers how financially was possible who was in contact with the executive management to get this done um, of course, sometimes you might face some skeptical people in the, um, maybe in the management who maybe doesn't want to change. There is always resistance against change. I think, so Rafa, if they had seen my introduction, they wouldn't be skeptical. But <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, so for that, you would need probably to run uh, a cost-benefit analysis. It's um, a really good method. So. How about seeing what can you build uh, with your center of excellence? What would be the cost? And of course, you're going to maximize your uh, organization investment with Tableau with that and get more uh, advantage. Try to build a dashboard story and go do a meeting, explain what is it. Um, and this is how you're going to uh, do it. Then who will be the one who start the center of excellence? Of, of course, anyone, any Tableau user can be uh, that, that person uh, who can be the trailblazer. Some people are better. Maybe they have the right tools, uh, others not. But having a prior Tableau desktop experience would be ve uh, very helpful. Uh, but of course, it's not required. It's uh, recommended. You don't need to be a manager. But keep in mind that it's very important to have um, sponsor from the executive management, those people who pay the money, right? Who needs to give you also approval to reach out to your colleagues and so on. So this is very uh, useful and also having great relationships with your, uh, between the other teams and so on. Um, it's everywhere. It's in any project. It's essential to have a good relationships. It's an asset. Um, maybe no one would do it from home. Right, so it's always better also to have uh, started it in the headquarters or in yeah, a hub. Yeah, definitely keep in mind uh, where you have a critical mass of people, that's the easiest place to start something like this, right? You, uh, you can imagine it would be difficult to start a center of excellence from your home office, um, so. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and one more point before we move on. Um, don't feel like you have to go it alone, right? If you can get two or three people to work with you as that co-founder or co-leader or whatever you want to call it, of the center of excellence, that's a great way to share some of the workload. It doesn't have to be a, a solo endeavor. Yeah, it can be a way to convince IT actually to embrace Tableau and make it uh, more a standalone framework for the whole organization. Then who should be involved? And actually, at Tableau, we have identified that there are five, five main roles um, at Tableau and the business intelligence. It's it's mainly about the analyst is the, the core, uh, they ought to be the core focus of your Tableau journey. Uh, those analysts start always with them. And then after that, you can expand more once your center of excellence become more matures. So try to bring more people into the center of excellence, into the Tableau journey. Uh, they might be more in the technical side or in the data or business side. Uh, as we can see here in those five roles, we have the analyst, the center, then you get data stewards, the expert matters of the data you have can be the IT administrators uh, who manage and secure the content and make sure that the platform is running uh, correctly. And the other side, you have the super consumers who basically use most of the analysis that is done uh, and the uh, final consumers. So try to bring more people, even those who are not really depending on data, not, uh, use, uh, they are not as much as possible as data-driven, uh, bring them, help them see and, and, and understand data. So I think um, we're introducing here a theme that's in a lot of the slides that come up, uh, which is kind of start with a very focused approach and then broaden and scale up as you go. 
Um, and so, of course, the analyst is kind of the engine of any BI operation. So that's, that's why we talk about starting with the analyst. At the beginning, you want to serve the analyst needs. But then absolutely, yeah, you, you, brought, in the, you brought in your target audience over time. Um, and if you're doing things really well, you'll even get, um, you'll even get people moving between roles. And people, um, all of a sudden, they, they came in as a super consumer. And now they're also an analyst and almost a data steward. Um, and so that, it's a great way to also build your team uh, to think about these roles. And of course, if we look at the, uh, those five roles, uh, at Tableau, we have identified that there's different uh, roles in the BI field, and that's why recently we have our uh, amazing role-based offering. Uh, some of you may be aware of it. If not, uh, try to reach out to your account managers and talk about it. Um, so to continue our idea about the center of excellence, um, there are two main things that are very crucial at the, uh, for when you, when you build your center of excellence. Uh, the center of excellence can have different shapes. It depends on how you want to build it. But keep in mind that it should have a home. So everyone should be able to know where to go if they need any help in Tableau. Uh, if they have questions, they need to learn or ask for licenses and so on, they, need where to, uh, they know where to go. Second is the balls of your center of excellence. So this is more about people. Make sure to hold regular sessions, involve people in those sessions, and build your community internally to help each other. Because from our experience working with our customers, we have seen that it's always better when the community work together and help to uh, solve the issues or to maximize the experience they have. So let's start by the first point, which is the COE home. So first of all, think about the platform, where it should be this uh, center of excellence. Start simple. You, most of the co organizations have already uh, an intranet. Maybe it can be a SharePoint, Confluence, Drupal, or any other uh, content management system. So start with this one. Build your, uh, uh, the, the beginning of it. Make it simple, pick a name, and a, go a good one, and then you can evolve it with the, with the time being. So uh, here we're talking about content. What actually, what belongs on this site? Um, and I think it, it's a pretty broad uh, spectrum of things you can put up here. Um, especially when you're just starting out, um, what I would really focus on is make sure that the, conf the content is relevant to the users. So talk to the first 10, 15, 20 people that are going to be involved in the COE and ask them what they want. Um, but even more so at the beginning, um, focus on uh, making sure that the content is up to date, is accurate, the links all work. Um, I can't tell you how many customers I've been to where they actually have some sort of intranet site for Tableau, uh, but the majority of the stuff is outdated, incorrect, dead links, emails to someone who doesn't work at the company anymore. Um, it's really discouraging. It's, it's almost worse than not having a site, is to have a site that um, doesn't function properly. And for sure, you don't want, as uh, Andrew is mentioning, to, have, uh, to get content st uh, stale. And that's why it's always better when you choose your platform to get something that is maintainable and easy to add, delete, or modify content. Because this is something you're going to do every day to make sure that your center of excellence is up to date. Maybe not every day, but to Rafat's point, you want to keep in mind that if you or one or two other people are kind of the... The, the instigators, right? You're the ones initially starting this. Make it easy on yourselves. Um, so go with a platform and a structure and a layout and all that that is easy for you to maintain. And then, yeah, again, scale. Um, we'll, we're going to be repeating on this, repeating this a few times. Um, start small. You know, start again with a focused, targeted set of users, probably analysts, and then expand over time. Um, and especially as you get larger, I think again the organizational aspect comes into it. Um, how are you organizing content um, to make it easy for people to navigate, for, to make it easy for people to find what they need? Um, I think you know, we all use different um, consumer apps, different websites, and we intuitively know when something is easy to use and when it's not. Um, and that same kind of mindset I think actually does transfer to the workplace. So if you build something that's easy to use, you're, you're more likely to get people um, coming back and, um, and participating. And actually, we have picked just one customer example about a center of excellence. This is the homepage they have. Uh, of course, at Tableau, we believe people are creative. Uh, so you might do something better, of course. Uh, try to, to make it your, 
your, in, your, in your own way, but please make sure uh, to include like many things such as your monthly, um, your monthly, um, for example, monthly meetings, sessions that you are holding with your community, could be uh, some useful links internally or external to the Tableau community, Tableau website. There are a lot of instructions, videos, t uh, tutorials, and so on that is very useful to your uh, users. Uh, so, uh, it can be as well some best practices at tips. Maybe someone have solved an issue in your organization and you want to share it with someone else if you have the same issue, how to solve it. You, uh, with the time being, it will evolve and grow for sure. Um, some users might need to have access to Tableau Desktop. They don't have the license. They don't know whom to ask. So make sure that you put all the information, put some link to request a license as well. I think that's another really good point, and it's something that um, we at Tableau sometimes overlook um, because it's easy for us to get our hands on Tableau, right? There are no, not many loopholes or, or hurdles. We just kind of do it. But we go to many customers, and it's really difficult for users to actually, like they know they want to use Tableau, but they don't know how to get started. They don't know how to get licenses allocated. They don't know how to get a site or a project built on their Tableau server. So those are really important things that, um, that are useful to document on your COE site um, and, and make as easy as possible. Uh, we, you know, we, we understand that some organizations have bureaucratic processes around licenses and chargeback and that kind of thing that, that get in the way, um, but at least make the process as... Um, as clear and painless as you can. So at this point, we wanted to talk about having the home of the center of excellence. And now we'll be about the second important point, which is the uh, balls of the COE. So here, you, um, you want to make sure that um, you build your community. It's about people. Uh, it's, uh, what, what we have seen from the customers, it's a good practice, actually, to hold regular sessions. Uh, send them um, reminders for their uh, meeting, make sure that it's structured and have um, uh, the schedule, M uh, make sure it's also updated, talk about new topics sometimes, uh, maybe new features, uh, releases, uh, someone who have built a nice uh, viz who want to share it with, uh, with the whole uh, organization. Um, this is like an example of uh, an agenda. You can do uh, whatever you want, but make sure always to get excitement about, uh, make the, all the users excited to know more about Tableau. This is this proved as well to raise the visibility of Tableau through your organization and to bring more users. Those that they are new in the organization, they heard from their colleagues about Tableau. They don't know what is it about or maybe they know pretty like the basics. Make sure to bring them to those meetings to, to learn more about it. And of course, with the time being, your Tableau experience will evolve. The center of excellence will be more mature. And in that case, you're going to have more user than use the strategy, the strategy divide and conquer. It tend to be successful. Try to make subgroups where they are more uh, subject uh, oriented, like some are more technical about maybe how to manage Tableau server and stuff like that. Others who are more uh, maybe for the managers could be about some best visual practices, um, any maybe in your departments about financial reports and uh, uh, some other business fields. So it depends on your case, but make sure to, to have subgroups because th those people will collaborate all together to, uh, to bring better value from uh, the reports. I just wanted to add a comment, um, a couple customer, a customer story on the last two bullet points. Um, I worked with an organization in the US. Their, their monthly community meeting um, was so um, popular and there was such a buzz around the things they were doing in the meeting, just that they were having fun basically, that they attracted, um, in, in the three months that I worked with them, they attracted four different teams that weren't using Tableau, kind of j just based on the buzz they were generating. The meetings were interesting and not your typical work meeting and it got people asking questions and by the time I had left, uh, left that, cl that client, um, they had onboarded four brand new teams, just kind of on the back of this interesting um, reoccurring monthly meeting. So yeah, you can continue going on with the experience. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk more about um, things we've learned from customers and um, tips, tricks, best practices, things that will um, become relevant as you scale up past that initial phase. Yeah, so this is kind of exactly what I was talking about. Um, although, although Tableau is, um, you know, at the end of the day, it is, it is work. We want to have some fun too. 
Um, and I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with this hashtag already, Makeover Monday. Um, in fact, uh, they were running an event yesterday here at the conference. How it works, um, it's, a, it's a, weekly, a weekly online, um, not really a contest per se, but event hosted by a couple of our um, Zen masters or community ambassadors, um, Andy Kreeble and Eva Murray. Um, that's their website there on the left, Makeover Monday. And how it works is they release a data set each week, uh, a data set and some sort of visualization or dashboard, and they ask the community to give it a makeover. Um, and it's a great way to, for users to you know, polish their own desktop skills, try new visualization methods, try new designs, um, and then the idea is everyone shares their, uh, their new version on Twitter after they've, after they've completed their makeover, um, and I think they pick a favorite each week. Um, so you can certainly introduce this concept to your company, um, all, you know, whether it's participating directly in Makeover Monday or running your own internal version um, that, that maybe has a slightly more um, work-focused bent. Um, I, think, I think this week the data set was about uh, hospital visits at NHS, um, but you could do something with uh, your own company's data that was a bit more focused on work if you wanted to keep it a bit more serious. Although it was a Tuesday. Yes, it was a Tuesday that they held the event yesterday. <laughs> uh, and in general, um, with, uh, with your COE, um, definitely use a little bit of competition to get people um, interested and motivated. Um, whether, it's, whether it's directly related to Makeover Monday or some sort of uh, show and tell, just something to kind of reward people and incentivize uh, participation. So another idea, uh, it's about skill builds. So this is uh, something that we use internally at Tableau. Uh, it tends to be uh, a, a tried and true method. It's, it shows success at Tableau. Mainly it's about when we want to onboard new users, someone, uh, new employees joining the company. So try to make some content to get them learn and up to speed uh, to scale up with their um, experience uh, with Tableau. Try to make different like categories, name it, whatever you want. Like at Tableau we have uh, bronze, silver, and gold levels. So you can get some training materials. And then at the end of each level, you set like a target after a month or two months of joining. You're going to have um, maybe a, an exam with a proctor who will uh, um, check the level. And then you give them this tag and say, bravo, you achieved this level. Let's go to the next one. So you keep your uh, new employees uh, always up to date and learning more by, uh, by following these uh, guidelines. It's really helpful. Yeah, I think the, the skill belts concept, it is a bit more work to kind of get started and implement than a lot of the stuff we've talked about. But it's really powerful because it, it applies to a lot of different areas. Um, so if you have skill belts in place, you can use those skill belts to, um, to segment and target your, your user base, right? So you can have content that is for people that have, have reached this level, for pe people that have reached the next level, et cetera. Uh, and it's also a way to formalize a training plan, right? So you can have different uh, Tableau concepts and Tableau skills that are associated with different levels on the skill belt ladder. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really good uh, concept that kind of covers multiple areas within the COE. It's actually also applied in this con conference about the sessions which is intermediate or beginner or advanced. So like that you know who will be invited to each uh, session based on their level. Maybe a bonus, point, uh, a bonus point adding to those two you already introduced about competition. This is very useful. Think about Iron Viz. You could probably make something like uh, the viz of the month and put the, uh, the visualization, uh, print it, do something, share it with your colleagues, send an email saying this is the best visualization for the month. This will really motivate everyone to participate and be um, using more and try to get more like best visual practices to apply it uh, internally, not only building something quickly uh, and uh, say that the work is done. So here, as your center of excellence will evolve and grow over time, we want to talk about two things. How, what are the basics of the center of excellence, and then how it will be growing more to a finely tuned machine. First is, um, make, uh, at the basics, you have the monthly meetings about the center of excellence. So with those meetings, mainly leaders will come to fill the agenda and um, Later on, when you go to more advanced level, you're going to have more recurring se sessions, more like focused on different groups. As we say, we are segmenting the, uh, the groups, as Andrew was talking. 
this is very useful so you can target your groups based on the uh, uh, each session is to a different segment uh, share the ideas between them it tends to be very useful so yeah here um, we're talking about some of the resources you might you might uh, have in your COE um, and at the beginning uh, a lot of times it's just things like the Tableau knowledge base articles, the Tableau online help, um, external blogs from you know popular Zen masters or um, people that post uh, frequently on Tableau's community forums. Those are all things you can start with. Um, but as you as you grow and evolve and uh, and sort of um, are firing on all cylinders, um, you can have things like custom tutorials uh, that are uh, designed and organized just for your organization. So um, every every company has something quirky about how they deal with data, whether that's um, an ETL process that's unusual, uh, data definitions that are unclear. There, you know, there's always some weird edge case that every company has to deal with, and it's a, it's a great thing to document that, um, publish it to your, your, uh, your COE's internal site, and that way everyone can benefit from that, that uh, accumulated knowledge. Of course, make sure as well, and, and the basics, to get to put some contact information for any kind of support. Uh, it can be internally to get contacted with someone who is expert in, the, uh, in, in your organization or some links to the community, uh, Tableau community. But as we have seen in this, uh, in this conference, we have a Tableau doctor. Why not making your own Tableau doctor at your organization, which is uh, much better and like that you help the community to be uh, helping each other. And it's another great um, use of the skill belts, right? So whoever gets to the top of the ladder, all they of a sudden they're the one leading the Tableau Doctor sessions. They become the coach and help the newer users move up the ladder. Uh, and so the last section here we're talking about, um, it's one of the things I mentioned back on our iceberg slide, right? The, the visual analytics concept. Um, I think a lot of people that start with Tableau they're, they realize that they want to do something a little different. They want to build more interactive and visual things. They want fewer tables. They want fewer cross tabs. But they're not exactly sure how to achieve that objective always. Um, so they have the right intentions, but maybe don't know how to implement or act on those intentions. Uh, but when you get to this more advanced stage, um, you'll have all those key principles kind of well established and well documented in your, in your organization. Um, if things are really going well, you can even have um, trainings recorded you know, uh, say visual best practice slides available on demand for users, all those sorts of things so that um, the second and third wave of people to start with Tableau don't go through the same pain. So um, we all know that Tableau is a data-driven company. We know that Tableau as a product is, is all about data and your, your COE should be no different. Um, you absolutely need to and should embrace feedback. If, if the COE isn't giving the users what they want, um, you're not really going to make much progress, right? It'll be a waste of time for everyone involved. Um, that said, you don't want to be too responsive and too reactive. Um, when you get a large audience, if you respond to every criticism, um, all of a sudden you're going a lot of different directions and, and things get kind of hectic. Um, so do make sure that the feedback you get, um, if, you, if you incorporate that feedback, make sure it aligns with your organizational goals. Um, you want to be all kind of moving in the same direction. And the last one I think is obvious. Um, but be aware that needs change over time. Um, the things that were important to the COE last year may not be important next year. Then how to make it? Well, as we know, Tableau is all about data. And even at the conference, we are making surveys, collecting points, when, uh, connecting uh, data when you enter to the, uh, to the room. So try to do also simple surveys to get feedback, to analyze uh, and analyze it. Uh, build maybe some visualizations about the results of those surveys and bring them to the meeting of the Center of Excellence, discuss it. That's a good point because an another thing that COEs have in common with Tableau, uh, Tableau is a very transparent company. So internally, Tableau employees know a lot about what's going on with Tableau and the COE should be the same, I think. If, if you ask for feedback and, and it's, it's uh, harsh or, or critical feedback, don't be afraid to you know, tell users you, you've gotten that feedback and you're actually listening. Um, so also, uh, you need to accept any uh, tell, tell, remind all the users about any um, constructive criticism that they may have, and also provide them with email that they can send to uh, tell you about their feedback. This will be very useful to improve uh, the center of excellence and improve your experience with Tableau. So 
after all of that, we need also to measure success about the center of excellence and know was it valuable or not, how can we make it better. So make sure to work closely to your uh, Tableau server administrator because they can give you access to the server repository data. It holds a lot of useful information. At it's actually Tableau analyzing Tableau's data. It was mentioned in the presentation this morning by our colleagues uh, Florian and Sebastian talking about the, uh, deploying Tableau as an IT service. So here, make sure to get those um, build reports from those ones. Maybe like check how many users were using Tableau before the center of excellence and after. How many users are generating contact, content. Um, how is the average daily uh, usage and so on. There is lots of statistics you can get out of it and it will be very useful to measure the success. And uh, the other side of that same coin is basically tracking the, the um, harder to quantify impacts, right? So the, the stories and the case studies that, that show um, your leadership, how Tableau and, and by proxy the COE are making an impact. Um, if, you, if you like buzzwords, you know, that's business value justification. Um, but at the end of the day, it's back to that slide where we looked at um, the, your, your larger objectives, right? You just, you just want to get stuff done. You have some problem to solve or goal to reach. Um, so when, you, when Tableau helps you do that, you should write that down, present that somehow back to, to, back to leadership. Great. Congratulations. You are almost make it to the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so here, it's a recap. Uh, Let's take a recap. A center of excellence is all about education and support for your community as it's the core of your um, center of excellence. Get curated resources, all put them together with some best practices. And the, go the whole goal is to maximize your Tableau's value. Yep. Um, so these are all the same four categories we hit on. Um, you can see. Um, each one of these, we have a few kind of ideas of what things that fall into that category, right? So education and support, user onboarding, internal Tableau doctor sessions, um, community, um, any sort of meeting, right? So you might start with that, with that one basic monthly meeting that's for everybody, but as you grow and evolve, maybe it gets subdivided into three, four, or five meetings, depending on the size of your company for, um, for different audiences. Uh, curated resources, um, one that we haven't mentioned uh, that is usually popular with customers we work with, um, dashboard templates. Uh, or style guides. So every, every company has some sort of color scheme or font scheme or just the way they like things to look. Um, and so certainly incorporate that kind of content into your COE as well. Uh, and then best practices. Um, again, I think best practices is a pretty nebulous word. It, it can mean a lot of things. Um, and so a great way to um, be more concrete is literally to build a list, a checklist or a rubric that you can grade dashboards against. Um, it sounds a little um, it sounds a little nitpicky, uh, but I've seen customers use it, use it with success. Um, they basically you know, have a checklist of six, eight, ten things, and every dashboard that's going to go to some sort of um, you know, formal production audience will get evaluated against that rubric. Um, it doesn't have to have a perfect score, but as long as it um, only has one or two marks against it, it gets to move forward. And yes, our, our learning objectives. Uh, what, what do you all know now? I hope these things are all true. So you should know what a center of excellence is. Um, you should know why it's so important. Um, and you should know how to start creating one. So if you were nodding yes on the last slide that Andrew was mentioning, hopefully, so please use the TC uh, application to fill out the survey. And oh, about this session, make sure to select uh, creating a center of excellence with Tableau. If not, please ask, ask questions. Yeah, if you, so if you were nodding no, before you fill out the survey, <laughs> ask us questions. Ask questions. <laughs> we are here to help you. So, so yeah, we'll take questions if anyone please? wants to start. We have some time, yeah. Yeah, we have plenty of time. We've got 15 minutes. Yeah. That's a good question, yeah. How does, how does starting a COE fit with your day job? Uh, that's a really fair question. Um, so back when we defined the COE, um, we said that it shouldn't, be, um, it shouldn't be just a dedicated team, right, that, that is the COE, because you really lose that community aspect. Um, and so I think that's probably why 
if I could change our slides, I would emphasize um, having two or three founders to, to spread out some of that work. Um, because yeah, I think it's a fair point to say that if one person is going to do it, um, they're putting in uh, some long hours. Um, and again, I think that's also why the executive sponsorship bit is important, right? Maybe, maybe you can convince um, some senior decision maker that you know, uh, five hours a week of your time um, should be dedicated to the COE. Um, right, adding to that as well that some people by nature are bloggers. They like to write whatever they have, maybe get it documented, which is something very, uh, very useful. Usually when we go on site to work with our customers, we make sure to make documentation of everything we do because we as humans, we may forget even if I go next time, I might not remember what I did. So with the center of excellence, the same thing. Whenever you do any useful, you find any useful material, anything, just go. It's a matter of five minutes maybe to go and add it to the center of excellence. Of course, at the beginning, you might need to spend a little bit more time to get it structured and And uh, I think that's useful. why the, the, sm the sm uh, start small concept is important. Um, at the beginning, if you have just a monthly meeting and a website, that's, you know, a little work to get off the ground, but um, I feel like it's, it's doable for most people. Also, at the end of each meeting, probably you can attribute tasks to the attendees, say, who will, like, volunteer to add this part and another part. So it's about teamwork. Question over here? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, have there been any thoughts at any point of building a part of Tableau server as a default center of excellence where you could kind of, like, build it up? Because this is the point where, in my company, basically all Tableau users are using Tableau server. So building a center of excellence outside of the Tableau server is... You're, so you're tricky. You're talking about the kind of the, the website that might host some of this content. Or a landing page of, of well, them, right? In Tableau Server, you should have, if you have those uh, kind of like, I don't know, default mm -hmm. users or um, mm -hmm. the, the point where you have those uh, folders, there should be kind of like a place, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. So I think the, the question is around um, Something, is there something on the roadmap that might support adding your own content to, to Tableau Server, right? kind of a, a, a customizable web page? Um, I can't say I've, I've heard anything about that specifically. I think there are different features and, and um, smaller bits that are on the roadmap that, that maybe support that. So things like um, certified data sources, uh, things like um, da uh, data lineage, so being able to see how a data source is used. And if, if I change this data source, how it will it impact different workbooks? Um, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a nice idea. Are the, the closest. So actually, I saw it at one of our customers. Uh, sorry, uh, they used a dashboard to basically put money, yeah. most of those links, and they make it as the home page of Tableau Server. When you log in, it will be the home page. This is something I saw. Another thing is about the APIs in Tableau. You can build the landing landing page, like pointing if you want to create. Um, maybe a visualization about our sales, click here. Because maybe they don't know how to go and click at the beginning, so you might need to help them by adding Yeah, the that's link. another. Yeah, this is what I do, but I was just thinking, maybe Tableau in the future, not mm -hmm. now, but in the future could be thinking about adding kind of like a default one, so whoever would like to build it, they would have already kind of like a template, not to really. Well, now it's maybe not too much related, but with the new release 2018.1, uh, there is um, in Tableau Online actually now that you can build some automatic templates like in Salesforce. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's a good idea though, the, so the idea of a center of excellence coming. template. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I agree at the moment. Uh, you any, need other, to any other hands for questions? Yeah? Um, so you spoke a lot um, about having kind of Tableau as your set of excellence. If you've got other tools, maybe it's something like Altrix, mm -hmm. would you recommend keeping that separate to the Tableau one or having that in together? Because obviously, you know, in your kind of five BI mm -hmm. rules, your data stewards and your analysts would probably be using tools like that, yep. so maybe not so much your consumers or your IT at the other end? Yeah, so the question is about um, incorporating other tool sets into the center of excellence, uh, for instance, Altrix. Um, I think it probably depends on, depends on the company. Um, it, so if you have a, a core set of users that are obviously using both tools all the time, then yeah, it probably does make sense to incorporate it. Um, but if it's just, if, the, if they're very different user bases, then maybe you want to have different sessions. Um, and it also fits with the concept of, of scaling, right? So maybe you start with just Tableau content, 
to keep it simple for whoever's building the first content, and then you add all tricks as you as you go up that uh, uh, that path. Another question? Yeah. Uh, so the question is, if you're if you're not quite at the Tableau server stage, if you're still more in the the desktop and and a limited user base, is that the? A? Yeah. Um, it's certainly a way to um, w one thing a CUE can do is uh, basically aggregate demand, right? So you can you can organize a CUE and all of a sudden you can show an executive, well look, I have 25 people that are clamoring for X Y Z. Um, we already have a lot of the skills needed. Um, so yeah, I think it's actually a really nice way. Um, to get your user base organized. You can almost think of it as a, as a labor union for, for Tableau analysts, right? Um, it's a way to kind of collect their demands and take them to, take them to leadership. Yeah? That's why you, maybe you can. Yeah, I was just going to repeat the question for yeah. you. Um, so asking about how do you manage demand? So what do you do to make sure the CUE doesn't get overwhelmed? Uh, which is, I think, a fair question because, um, as we highlighted a couple times, you don't want to give a bad experience. So actually, uh, it's all about getting good structure. So any, any new demand that is coming, try to fit it in the best uh, place on the center of excellence. If you don't find a right place, maybe wait to the meeting to hold the regular meeting and, and it, discuss it. It could be that, so we showed that slide with the five roles and we talked about starting with the analysts. It could be that you need to go even narrower. So if that's a concern that you have, right, maybe you pick, um, you know, find some way to slice that analyst group into an even smaller sliver and just really focus on them to start. Um, which, yeah, is tricky because what do you, you don't want to be turning people away. Um, and I, so I would say at that point, if you feel like you're really turning people away, it's kind of back to this last question about aggregating demand to take to management and say, look, we have so many people that are interested. We need more resources to support all, all this demand and all this interest. Um, so it's a good problem to have, uh, but yeah, definitely one to, to think about. And that's why you need to get sponsorship from someone in the executive. They might help you to have a dedicated person or uh, like to manage the content at least, uh, not all uh, full time, but really uh, 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 locating more from their time to do those kind of, uh, of jobs. Any more questions? All right, thanks everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, also, um, in, in the CEO, CEO meet, right, um, where do we have actually people who will have laws, right, and must have those skills? Is it the whole Tableau com that is committed to the CEO, or is it is just an analyst that is going to do his job? Um, so, I would say, you, you, again, you want to start with the analyst, right, so that the people that um, in your company that already work with BI tools or that spend a lot of time in Excel, um, right, those are the people that are most likely to become analysts. And so that's where maybe initially the COE is primarily analysts. Um, uh, so if you, maybe you have 50 people and 40 of them are analysts at the, in the early stages. Over time, as you're more comfortable with the COE and it's kind of more stable, you can certainly incorporate um, more users uh, and, and appeal to kind of a wider audience. Um, you can use the COE as a way to, to bring users from the consumer end of the spectrum up towards analyst and vice versa. Um, yeah, exactly. You might see someone who is really mainly analyst, but he's more maybe focused on the uh, business side or going more to, the, uh, to, to know everything about data uh, to help like building and refining and publishing those data sources. So you're going to move to the another level. So start with the analyst, as we mentioned in this slide, and then grow. And we've, um, we've probably, um, in multiple presentations, I've seen emphasized how important the data steward role is. Um, so the analyst can't do any work until the data gets organized and the data makes sense. Um, so that's probably the next um, group of users I would be incorporating into my CUE are, are the data stewards to really bring the data stewards and the analysts kind of together onto the same page. Um, so it's not just analysts, but that's certainly the, the starting point. Yeah, especially having certified data sources at the beginning built by those guys that can be used across all the uh, users. This helps you to build a self-service uh, where everyone can connect to those certified data sources and build their own uh, charts. Yeah. 
We are <coughs> along this side, uh, the certified data sources. I think it's a very good starting point. But I feel like uh, in big companies, you need like a, a next level of information to document uh, data more properly. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest as a as first off tool? Yeah, so the question um, is around kind of data cataloging and, and organizing your data. Um, certified data sources is, is a nice start, but uh, maybe not always sufficient in a big, in a big organization. Um, there are a couple other small features in Tableau that may help, right? So that, that ability to, dis, um, to comment on or describe a field so that when a user hovers over it, they get that, that text that pops up to explain what this measure is or explain what this if calculation does. you don't know does. where to do it, when you right click on Tableau Desktop, on the default, you can add a comment that appears and if you hover with the mouse. But as to, the description. as to really robust um, data cataloging, um, it's a good question, and I don't have a really great answer for you. I've, I've seen a couple customers um, that have struggled with that and have kind of been begun to consider different tools. Um, some people take an approach where they just kind of rely on things like SharePoint to document. Um, honestly, that's a, that's a very good question. I'll probably be looking into it myself. Thanks. So if you don't have any more questions, uh, we thank you all for participating. One last. <laughs> so so yeah um, we would say at the beginning it could be any it could be any serious tableau user anyone who's enthusiastic or passionate about tableau could can lead the coe um, it, again, it's back to scale. If your company is, you know, is very large and you're growing rapidly, then maybe it does become part of someone's day job to, to oversee the COE. But, but again, we don't, we, we, we don't think of it as a dedicated team. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of thin layer across many different uh, departments in, in your company. Um, so that, that management could fall to someone who sits in, in a BI team, but it could also, I've seen it also sit with um, business, um, it really just depends on your, your organization, unfortunately. I can't give a great answer. There's, there's no has to be. Um, I would say that the, the biggest criteria is that, that that person be enthusiastic. You don't want just someone who's kind of doing you, the job. You will identify them, those people who really want to contribute to the content of the Center of Excellence. It will be people who are excited and, and have enthusiasm about uh, Tableau. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Enjoy the party tonight.